Good afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and I thought I'd give a bit of an update on the low pressure system developing that we've got over into the Timor Sea, just offshore from northwest and western Australia. We've got a proper tropical low pressure system beginning to get itself going and it looks like it's got a solid chance of potentially becoming our first tropical cyclone of the 2024, 2025-26 uh, season rather, I can't believe I'm saying that, uh, into the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf just towards the west or potentially the northwest of Darwin. I'm not overly concerned about this system here, it doesn't look like it's ever going to become a stronger landfalling uh, threat and it doesn't look like it's going to become a problem for Darwin or Broome but we could still be talking about some rather significant impacts on the rainfall side of things particularly through the northern parts of the top end of the Northern Territory and also through the Kimberley coastline of Western Australia. We may also see some decent rainfall accumulations around Kununurra or Wyndham as well but especially around the Darwin area down towards Wadi we could be talking about rainfall accumulations between 80 to 150 millimetres, half decent even for this time of the year. It's definitely going to enhance some of that thunderstorm and shower activity that we've already begun to see get itself really going through the NT and parts of WA as well and we may also see this spin up another tropical low pressure system into the Gulf of Carpentaria however the chances of this system ever becoming a tropical cyclone are pretty much zero because wind shear will be very unfavorable for this system over in the Gulf of Carpentaria but what are we talking about in terms of rainfall well there are going to be some pretty significant totals this is a look at the next 10 days here for parts of northern WA and the Northern Territory already you can see from the ECMW forecast model which is actually a low balling forecast model right now because it never takes this system up in towards tropical low or tropical cyclone status which would enhance the rainfall accumulations for northern Australia but we've already got falls between the 80 to 150 millimetre mark through the top parts of the northern territory and that also includes Darwin which is looking at at least 80 millimetres and some scattered rainfall accumulations on this forecast model here between 20 to 40 millimetres with uh, spot rainfall accumulations pushing closer to 80 millimetres here through parts of the Kimberley region of western Australia. I think this is uh, underdoing it here. I definitely think the East Blair forecast model can do a lot better in terms of rainfall and the reason for that is the Eastern Blair forecast never takes this thing up to tropical cyclone status because this system hovers too close to Indonesia. When this tropical cyclone or tropical low begins to develop, which it looks like it does begin to get itself going around Tuesday or Wednesday next week on the 18th or the 19th, you can see it is right here. But the Eastern Blair forecast takes it up into Indonesia itself. It doesn't take it further off towards the east like other forecast models are suggesting right now. Now, with the land interaction here with Timor and parts of the islands with Indonesia, plus also the extreme amounts of wind shear that come off the equator, these tropical cyclones and tropical lows really struggle once they approach Indonesia, which is why Indonesia doesn't get tropical cyclone activity all that often. So this system here, the further north it goes, the weaker it's going to be. But what major forecast model consensus is right now is that this system is going to track over towards the east, and then it's going to make a U-turn when it's over the top of Melville Island and make a dive through the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf and then into the uh, warm waters of the Indian Ocean where it is then going to fizzle out down around here. This is the most likely track that this system is going to take and it's also a track that other forecast models are pretty confident with as well. In particular the GFS forecast model which calls this system's development around the 19th or the 20th and then brings it up towards Darwin around the 21st or the 22nd as a relatively strong tropical cyclone for this time of the year. It's not often we're talking about a system here which will be approaching Category 2 proportion around the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf and then into the Darwin area where it will then recurve. Now the threat for Darwin right now is very very minimal even if this system does develop it's likely to do so very close to Darwin but it is expected to remain a small tropical cyclone and about the worst that it is going to be bringing to the Darwin area is going to be rainfall. It will also bring some gusty showers and some strong winds and uh, potentially some heavy rainfall at times through parts of the top end of the Kimberley region as this system then recurves down toward or skim in the top of the Kimberley region but our big population centres up in this part of Australia, Darwin and Broome are expecting very little in the way of significant impacts here. What I can say for certain though is that an enhanced amount of rainfall is expected around the Darwin area and this is going to go from about the 18th of uh, November out to about the 22nd or the 23rd. It's expected to be about a four or five day period of enhanced rainfall accumulations. The GFS is going ham here with some of these numbers getting close to 700 millimetres which is not unusual for a slow moving tropical cyclone but again this system is going to be very very small so if, this, if those accumulations do occur they going to be very very isolated around the low pressure center or wherever it tracks and most likely to be offshore which is where the forecast modeling has it right now if it does crawl closer to the coastline we will see some bigger rainfall accumulations here and as you can see the GFS forecast model is calling for somewhere between 100 to 150 millimeters dropping down to 100 millimeters through the Darwin area and then through parts of Melville Island here onto the Tiwi Islands increasing up to 300 millimeters and again depending on where this tropical load does move we could be seeing those significant rainfall accumulations fall either very far offshore further out into the Timor Sea or they could come close to the coast or even overland and it is a bit of a waiting game to see where this system does develop first but at this 
this point in time, it looks like the rainfall is strictly going to be coastal. It's not going to move into some of the bigger river catchments through the central parts of the Northern Territory, which is good because if it did that, then we'd be talking about a very significant flooding risk through parts of the Northern Territory at this time of the year. That's not a good thing. And same deal with the Kimberley region as well. The rainfall is expected to remain coastal from this system here. Kununurra and Wyndham have a pretty small chance of seeing significant rainfall accumulations as a result of this tropical low or tropical cyclone. Now, the chances of a full-blown tropical cyclone developing at this point in time are actually pretty minimal, but it is still a possibility. We have some high levels of wind shear in the upper levels of the atmosphere, and if you're familiar with my severe thunderstorm forecast, you'd be thinking, oh, wind shear, tropical cyclone, isn't that meant to be a good thing? Tropical cyclones are the opposite of severe thunderstorms. Even though they are essentially comprised of rotating severe thunderstorms, tropical cyclones dislike wind shear very, very much. So when we've got this tropical low here, which is expected to be moving somewhere around here at this point in time, Wednesday or Thursday next week, we've got high levels of wind shear situated just the south of this system here. In fact, just the south of this red line, have got wind shear values approaching 100 knots, which is where the jet stream is right now. This means that there's only a very small sliver of area here in the team we'll see that's actually favourable and conducive to tropical cyclone developments. So this storm here really does have to get quite lucky to actually become a full-blown tropical cyclone. And it's also why once it moves back into the Indian Ocean and starts interacting with the jet stream, it'll get ripped apart pretty quickly with a lot of wind shear and also a lot of dry air out here as well. Humidity values are not very favourable for this system. But nonetheless, we're definitely expecting a tropical low to move somewhere through this part of northern Australia, somewhere through the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf. Whether it then goes into the Northern Territory or whether it recurves back out to the Indian Ocean, it's still a few days too early to be able to answer that question for sure. But this system here now serving a very good reminder that we are approaching tropical cyclone season. We're, we're now in it, essentially, but we're approaching uh, seeing impacts from tropical cyclones. So you need to be ready for tropical cyclone activity. You need to have your cyclone emergency kits ready. And this goes for all of northern Australia, Queensland, the Northern Territory, and Western Australia included through the tropics, make sure you are tropical cyclone ready because it's not going to be long until these systems start becoming stronger and more problematic, particularly for the WA and the Queensland side of things where the forecast is very favourable this year. So just to wrap it all up, Darwin, no need to worry. This serves as a good reminder for tropical cyclone readiness, nothing else. At this point in time, things can and will change over the coming couple of days. And if you want to stay in the loop, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and also my main channel on YouTube and check out my Facebook page as well. Links will be in the pinned comment. But that is going to be all for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this forecast update and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.